Hi, so I'm back with the uh, trusted MacBook Air, which is the 8GB version with the M2 chip from 2022. Now, we're gonna uh, check out the performance of Xcode again on this machine. Now, I've done this before, but not perhaps for uh, several months, maybe even more than a year now. And the reason I'm doing it again is because Xcode, of course, has a slam dunk new version called version 16. The Mac OS has gone through some upgrades. And so the question arises, in 2024, can you still use this particular MacBook here to do app development? You know, is it still uh, usable? Uh, I can tell you that the answer is yes. I have just developed an app with it. But just to demonstrate it, I'm just going to create a new project right here, as I've done in the past. And uh, we're just going to call it uh, Test3, I guess. It's just a dummy name. It's going to be a Swift UI project, as always. And we just create it on the fly. And we let the canvas render over here. Uh, now the canvas rendering, and I think I've mentioned this in previous videos as well, always takes a little time uh, before the first sort of time that it is built. And so, you know, that's not unusual and it's not because of the new Xcode version or anything. It's always been a little slow on, uh, on these machines. <coughs> but no wonder. In the meanwhile, I am just going to check the, uh, uh, the, the simulator on which I want to run this. I'm going to pick iPhone 16 Pro. There we go. And uh, as you can see in the meanwhile, the canvas has also been rendered. Now, once the canvas has been rendered, it is fairly snappy in terms of, um, you know, if I just update this over here, you can see immediately the updates over here. If I just go like this and I go font, um, and, and you can see the IntelliSense is suggesting large title to me immediately. I can just tab over and get that. And I get that and immediately it becomes large. Then if I go here and I say foreground color, now notice how quickly it is giving me the IntelliSense. This is new in this version of Xcode. And it definitely seems, you know, I, I have not even typed F or four yet. It is automatically giving me a suggestion to set the foreground color, which, which uh, foreground style, sorry. Uh, as it happens, uh, so I'm just gonna take this and then I'm gonna go uh, then it's suggesting padding, but I don't want padding yet. I just uh, instead want foreground color. And I'm going to make it uh, red. Okay. And uh, it should become red. And then the padding. And uh, there you go. So uh, the, the color doesn't seem to have worked. I think I picked the wrong property here. So we just ignore this. And uh, I can just go back here and literally it's in real time. So again, that's always the lesson that, you know, the, the, when the canvas is rendering first time around, it's a little bit slow, but once it's rendered, the actual development flow is very fast and usable. But now let's just go into the simulator. The simulator is not running right now, so it's gonna come up cold. Usually when you're developing, I'm just gonna press play here. Usually when you're developing, uh, you would have the simulator already running uh, you know, and so the first time you run it, it's going to be a little bit longer and then it is going to be significantly faster. So I'm just running it from cold just to show you how long it takes. Obviously, as you can see, not very long. And uh, it says installing test three app to iPhone 16 Pro. It is doing the installation as we speak. And so, um, yeah, there we go. This is the brand new simulator. It has it is running iOS 18. It's for the new phone and it's getting launched now. Here you can see test three over here coming up and uh, it should come up in a second and again when I run it the second time around with, with, with the warm boot and I'll just show you in a minute it'll be even faster right but the first time it does take a little bit longer and so you there we go you just have to sort of uh, give it time the, the first time you run it all right so it is now attaching it says up here as you can see and that's taking a little bit of time as well um, so we just wait for this to happen. Also, uh, now it says running. So that means that hello world should show up here any, any instant. While that's happening, let me also sort of tell you that once you upgrade Xcode to the new version and you have a brand new set of simulators, the first time you run the simulator for any particular phone, it tends to take very long sometimes, all right? That's just a one-time thing after a fresh install of Xcode. It can even take five minutes sometimes, and, and it did take long for me. It's doing building up its caches and whatnot. But if you keep sort of, uh, once you, you're past that, then as you can see, it's fairly snappy. Not only that, but now that it's been loaded once, if I now um, stop it, and let me just go here, okay. If I now stop it, so that sort of stops it over here. 
uh, and I just say running again. Uh, the the canvas is of course is paused right now, so it's not going to update over here. Instead, I'm just going to go and straight away and press play again, just to show you how much faster it would be on the second time around. And so this time, as you can see, um, it's coming up a lot faster, and it's running a lot faster, and it came up a lot faster. And then that's really the, you know the, the flow that you're in right now, right? Uh, it, when you're developing, you you keep the simulator running, you make some changes, you try them again, and so for that particular workflow, again, I'll stop it one more time. And uh, I'm just going to add uh, one more text here. Text, um, this is pretty good. And uh, just run it again. Uh, there we go. And just, you know, just to show that it was not a one off. There we go. Pretty snappy. Comes up and starts to run. This is pretty good. And so, yeah, as I mentioned at the beginning, the answer to the question can you still use? an M2 MacBook Air with 8 GB uh, for iOS app development in 2024? Uh, it is a resounding yes. Now this is a very small app of course, but I'm actually developing a proper app which I've actually just submitted to the App Store as well. It's a step counting app. And uh, my experience was exactly the way I've just shown you on this one. The reason I'm not running that is because that requires some, um, you know, uh, some uh, permissions in terms of motion and healthcare data, and that doesn't really work well on a simulator. And so you really have to demo it on a real machine. But um, the speed is exactly what I've just shown you. And so there you have it. Um, if you already have this machine, and if you're having some problems, I would suggest, you know, maybe reinstalling Xcode because it should run fairly snappily, all right? Once once it has done the initial cache building and, it, and, and whatnot, or indexing or whatever it is it needs to do, it should not be slow. Uh, maybe you have to sort of reinstall a few things or clear caches or something. But other than that, it is still a very capable machine for um, app development. Uh, thanks for watching this. I hope this is useful to some of you because I did see some comments um, asking for this particular question. And uh, I hope that this video will help to answer and uh, put some mind at ease. Thanks for watching.